make with the aftermath of concussion. Now no Jordan Pickett tonight. So the starting five on your screen remains the same. Combs, Archie, Barksdale, O'Leary, and Brennan with Osborne and Henderson having to get more minutes off the bench. You'll see more of John Hubler in this game. He did have a three in the contest against Oral Roberts. Is this something you talk about with your team, or do you almost ignore the fact that you're playing with an awfully short bench tonight? Oh, oh you absolutely talk to them about it. I mean, these guys, they know it. They understand it. And I think what they understand is that it's your classic all hands on deck. So everybody's going to get minutes. Everybody's minutes have to be efficient. Uh, you're going to extend your minutes. You kind of have an idea of when you're coming in and what you're going to do. And, and I think in, in many respects, as a player, you're kind of happy about it because you know we're recruited for this opportunity this season. When they clearly made the most of it. And I think the other thing, too, that's allowed them, Greg, to, to accelerate their pace as a basketball team. And look what it's done for them. Mavericks win the tip, and they will move quickly. They have been in triple digits several times this year. Last time it happened in a loss where they and Fort Wayne both got above 100. Shot taken and missed by Jake White. Transfer all tipped out of bounds by the Jaguars. You talk about Jake White. I mean, good gracious. He's at 10 games over 24th in the league in scoring. Knows where the hoop is. How many teams have <laughs> two guys that average 17 points a game? Well, four in double figures. And so, you know, when you're talking about the, the stats they put up. The runner by Thurman doesn't get the friendly roll. And Barksdale, the rebound for IUPUI. And Combs had a good look at the basket. But O'Leary was thinking rebound, not pass reception. Turnover IUPUI. And. Patterson a little bit off on his shot attempt at the other end. This is the pace. <laughs> yeah, every, everyone, you, me, fans, fans here, fans at home, settle in. This is going to be the pace. Shot clock's reduced this year in college basketball from 35 to 30. Omaha would be fine going to NBA rules and playing 24. I think the game plan, obviously, get inside to O'Leary as much as you can. And that's going to be a blocking foul against Omaha. And, and frankly, it's not an overly big Omaha team. No, it isn't. Their tallest starter is White at 6'8". They'll bring in Daniel Meyer off the bench at 6'9". So they play to their skill sets. They've got talented guards. Right. They've got speed. That's how they're going to play. Well, and, and they're tough matchups. They're four and five guys, Greg, are really tough matchups. Now, I mean, IUPUI can match up with them, but you know, a lot of teams can't. Brennan, the mid-range jump shot. We talk about it. efficiency. Nice ball rotation, nice patience. Brennan, his scoring average going up as he's getting more and more minutes instead of Evan Hall. Brennan at four and a half points a game. Sophomore from Garen Catholic. Shot clock at nine. Thurman does not go. Omaha, O of their first four from the field. Yeah, but a good look. I mean, a good look for Thurman. Now Combs, the pull-up jump shot. See, I just like him in rhythm. I like him off the dribble in rhythm. I know it's no pass, and you don't necessarily like that, but for him, I don't think that's a bad deal. Now White and Omaha still 0 for the night. Omaha's fourth year as part of the Summit League. That's going to be an offensive foul, led with the arm. Got some separation, but... Don't like the way he got it. You know, one of the things we watch here, Greg, is that you know the bigs for Omaha are so active and so mobile. It's a, it's a you know big on little ball screen. And you've got to get a hard hedge. The biggest thing, in addition to the hedge, is you got to rotate the other guys. That rope backside rotation is extremely important. Good job by O'Leary, not to try to do too much. Oh. Just kept his position. Thurman had nowhere to go. Just stay straight up and make him have to play you. Thurman on the other end, though, gets the steal. That is now three turnovers for IUPUI. Patterson weaving his way through traffic, and White gets <laughs> Omaha on the board. Well, you can see why Patterson is so good. It's, I mean, he's just you know, quick, great decision-making, in the, in the lane quickly and deeply. Patterson, a senior from Portsmouth, Virginia. This is an Omaha program that recruits heavily from the junior college ranks. And that's going to be a hand check foul on Thurman, stopping the progress of Brennan. And given their location and given the amount of great community college programs in Oklahoma and Kansas, not surprising that Omaha has a lot of kids that are 
one and two year kids in the well, program. Here's a kid who's averaging, you know, he's second in the league in assists and in the top 20 in the country because he's so quick and can get in the lane. And there's transition right there. We talk about it. Take care of the ball. Don't allow runouts. Well, yet another steal by Omaha. They average over nine a game. That easily leads the league. And they've quickly tied it at four. O'Leary able to keep possession, at least momentarily. Leads to an easy look for Bunnett. See, they're doing this great. You're talking about steals in Omaha. They're doing this, and they don't press very often. They don't need to. But uh, that's what's amazing about it is if you put it on the floor, you need to be you need to take care of it. Holland's the dish, and Thurman the finish. They just make it look so easy. I mean, uh, Holland just <laughs> splits the uh, the double team, splits the hedge without any trouble. Well, Larry wants to isolate. No, he was going back over that shoulder the entire time, and Thurman bails him out with the foul. Heady fly by O'Leary. He'll get two free throws when we come back. Trayshawn Thurman, though, playing above the rim for Omaha. He's got four, and we're tied at six. And Matt O'Leary will get a couple of free throws, and with Trayshawn Thurman picking up a couple of early fouls for Omaha, he will quickly have a seat. Replaced by Randy Reed for the Mavericks. And O'Leary. Good shooter from the floor, but not a great shooter from the line at 57% on the season. Here's the problem. Here you are at the first media timeout, IPUI 3 of 3 from the field, four turnovers. And again, against a team that is one of the more prolific teams in creating turnovers in the country. Nick Osborne will check in next dead ball for IUPUI. And Smallwood also in. One of the seniors that comes in off the bench for this Omaha squad. They were a postseason team a couple of years ago, played in the CIT. Hollins finds Reed. Shot was altered, and eventually that ball out of bounds off Omaha. Now Osborne in. O'Leary has a seat for IUPUI. Yeah, and I think, you know, Jake White took a little shot to the head, too, yeah. coming out of it. You know, Reed was deep. Uh, nice defense on the part of the Jags, not allowing him to get the... He's deep on the catch but couldn't score. Reed, one of a couple of guys that began their career playing Division II basketball for this Omaha program. He played at Quincy over in far western Illinois. Combs, deep, three, no. O'Leary, I believe, had position, and Reed fouled him. Let's just go on the other way. No, it's, Correct, it's it, on Reed. It is. They were a little hand-to-hand -hand combat <laughs> inside. Craig, both, both of them trying to clear territory. Good look at Jason Gardner. Matt Crenshaw to his right, Scott Gillespie to his left. Near steal. And again, that's kind of Omaha's MO. They're going to go for those steals. Yeah. If they don't get them, they might give up the layup. But the idea is you can't keep up with them for 40 minutes. Well, sharp pass, step to your pass. And clearly, you know, this is a, a, a good move, you know, once uh, Nick Osborne got the catch. But you have to be aware. You know, sometimes one of the best, best things you can do, you have a little pass fake uh, because they shoot the gaps very, very quickly. I'm just struck by the fact that I know how hard it is for what Darren Hansen has done, Greg, to make the transition to Division Two to Division One. That is hard. And you know what? He's done it the right way. You know, look at a guy like Reed. You're in as a Division Two player, and let me tell you what you are. You're a bona fide Division One guy. What he's done is amazing. 9-6 IUPUI, the early advantage. Tough turnaround. Rebound by Combs. White with the shot taken and missed for Omaha. Now Barksdale for three. And not his strongest suit. See, but that's the quick kind of shot you don't want. It allows him to get out. He did a nice job on transition back, but that's the kind of shot you have to watch. Patterson, contested shot, no lyric. Doing a good job of limiting Omaha to one and done on these possessions as they are struggling from the floor in the early going. Omaha 3 of 11 from the field here in the first five and a half minutes. Yeah, but you just get the sense they're in pace. They're in kind of rhythm. You know, double team on the ball screen there. Leads to an open three for Mason Archie that rattles in. So we talk about efficiency offensively. We know Mason Archie can knock down the shot. Three-point shots have been a struggle as of late for IUPUI. Reed a struggle on that three-point shot. Little 6-0 run for the Jaguars.
Archie goes right by Patterson. Eventually the ball finds Darrell Combs. Well, good ball movement, but also good patience and good decision making. A little step back for Combs. That's a long two. Doesn't matter. And Patterson the rebound. You know, they've done a nice job on Patterson, especially Mason Archie. Here's a guy averaging nearly 18 a game, Greg, and can really isolate you and break you down in transition. Archie in there for his defense. He averages five points a game. But his ability to guard spots one through three, the reason he's getting playing time, Smallwood the basket for Omaha. Well, Smallwood just goes baseline, no post to come out and give early help, and he takes it straight to the rim. Three players await to check in for the Mavericks. T.J. Henderson for IUPUI. First basket in a few minutes for Omaha. There's plan to passing lanes. Let again give away for IUPUI. Fifth Jaguar turnover. Smallwood all alone for the trailer three. And when you got that much time to shoot it, you had better knock it down. Well, it's a breakdown, obviously, because no one comes out, no communication. And this is what happens, Greg, when you when you get the steal and the run out. You know, your communication lacks, your, your uh, responsibilities are hard to pick up. You leave a standing shooter wide open. 37% three-point shooter is Smallwood. Osborne a little bit of a better percentage, but can't get it to go there. O'Leary got a hand to it, couldn't control it, out of bounds to the Mavericks. Well, here's the issue. Three black shirts check in, one white shirt checks in, and pace. Listen, this has been quick. There have been, uh, there have been very little stoppage. There has been little stoppage because of fouls, because of uh, turnovers that have gone out of bounds, this pace clearly in the favor of Omaha. Freshman Zach Jackson in for Omaha, wearing number 21 from Wichita, Kansas. Sophomore Daniel Meyer from Billings, Montana. Transfer from Wright State. Smallwood, good ball movement there. Turned down the three after making one the last time down. A little runner for Smallwood, not that time. And a rebound corralled by Barksdale, who can lead the break for IUPUI. Here's Henderson, the freshman from Cecina. His little runner is up and eventually <laughs> falls. What a nice move off that one, uh, one foot floater, if you will. Big basket. Slowed down this momentum a little bit. Of the seven that have seen the floor for. IUPUI, six have scored. That ball ruled to be off the foot of Hollins and Omaha. Turnover, and IUPUI enjoying a three-point lead going to the media. Timeout. Omaha, though, doing what they do on defense. Steals, transition basket. Both of those coming next week. They will host the Coyotes of South Dakota on South Dakota on Thursday, and then they will play Fort Wayne on Saturday. And that could be for a league championship if it breaks right for both teams. But Fort Wayne more in the driver's seat at 9-3 and three in league play. That's a smackdown by Jackson trying to go for the loose ball. Won't be on the shot. It'll be on the floor as it's team foul number five against the Mavs. Well, it's just great pass inside. Nick Osborne surrounded with three black shirts. Strong enough, tough enough to get it up toward the rim. And oh. Barksdale did not establish position inbounds just yet. Turnover number six committed by IUPUI. You just get this sense, Greg, that Omaha's 5 of 16 won't continue. Right. And that they, they are a team that once things start to go their way momentum-wise, they may be tough to slow down. Patterson back in for the Mavericks after a quick breather. Shot clock at a dozen. White kept that pivot foot down the entire time. The IUPUI defenders kept those hands straight up as well. Osborne couldn't snare it, but the shot clock properly never reset. You yep. see it on your screen, it's at one. That's, and that's just great defense. You held your position. You know, White was doing everything he possibly could to try to find a, a little bit of an opening. Now, as I say that, they're going to say that IUPUI had possession enough trying to save it inbounds, uh, but that'll reset the shot clock. I'm with you. Uh, I concur with your initial ruling. So an extra 30 seconds of defense are in that vicinity potentially required. 
Wave off the basket by Patterson. A hand check foul to be whistled against Mason Archie. How about Patterson just explodes off the <laughs> off the dribble. I mean, this guy's a thousand point scorer. Uh, you know, he is just a prolific scorer. His quickness, he may be as quick a kid as there is in the league. Running lefty by Erickson does not go. Marks down now a little five on four here, so IUPUI selectively pushes the tempo, and Brennan gets the finger roll to fall. Just reward your big guy if you can. Great finish. Well, couldn't tell if it was Jason Gardner or somebody from the bench, but the reason I said five on four is that somebody yeah, yelled absolutely. it from the sidelines. No, you have numbers, clearly. Three in the corner, does not go, and Henderson with the rebound. It's an IUPUI team that lost in a close one at Omaha back in early January. Henderson gets the basket, and Darren Hansen will ask for a 30-second timeout. Seven-point lead for IUPUI. Well, remember when we at the top of the game, we said, look, go after a team, Greg. A team that, that fast breaks oftentimes isn't great in transition defense. Be you successful for them. You know, a night like tonight, they're not shooting the ball well. IUPUI has done a nice job. Uh, of rotating on the ball screens. They haven't done a great job of stopping the ball screen. The quickness that Omaha has uh, with Patterson especially, and, and, and even with Erickson is splitting the ball screens, but the back line, the back side help has been tremendous. See right there. It's a perfect example there. Great help on the back side out of the screen. And Henderson's going to give you whistled for the Hand check foul, his first, and team foul number three. So when you want to, you know, when we get to a situation where we might be talking about fatigue, one way to gauge it and judge it is on these kinds of rotations, how how quickly are your rotations being executed? Right now, they're doing a great job of it. You see here, now who's the next guy up? Right there, and it's great movement by Nick Osborne. Man, that's... That is a great delivery. Man, oh, man. How about Reed on the great pass? White the finish. He's got four. Give Reed the assist. It's those two seniors. Henderson already at his average of four points a game. Brennan already above his average with six. Henderson trying to keep it going and does. Just inside out. You know, you, you get the bounce. If you're Aaron Brennan, you got nothing, you got a great angle. And, and, and listen, give TJ Henderson credit for going to the right spot. Patterson, <laughs> tough shot. His first points of the half. Well, he splits the hedge, he splits the double team beautifully and gets in the lane as quickly as anyone. Archie, the pull up, no. But the ball finds TJ Henderson. Randy Reed finds TJ Henderson in the basketball. Now, Jake White, no, and Combs doing a good job of keeping Omaha off the glass. So here's the time where you, yeah, this is a good decision. You don't have numbers, slow yourself down. You know, get yourself where you can work inside. Uh, uh, Henderson throws it away. Yep. And Hollins with the finish at the other end, his first basket. And a 30-second timeout will be taken by IUPUI. Yeah, this is a good timeout. Really is. So with 8-10 left to go here in half number one. Now you just see your great, you know, great vision on, on Aaron Brennan's part. But well, again, you know, this is their MO. This is what they do. There's a reason why they're, you know, one of the best teams in the nation in tempo. Uh, they're also, I mean, let's face it, they lead the uh, Summit League in a, a bunch of categories and primarily steals. You know, deflections and those kinds of things. They're very good. And here's a little bit of a trap. A little one, two, one, one, three quarter court. Mark Stale and O'Leary return for IUPUI. Now it's showing a little zone. Stay a little three, two, one, two, two. A little odd front zone. Shot clock already down to eight. O'Leary lets fire. Had a good look, good rebound by Barksdale. Patterson used that speed of his hands to knock that ball away. But the possession continues for IUPUI when we return from the media timeout. 
Solid start for Jason Gardner's team. His Jaguars lead by four on HTSN. For sport, mm -hmm. which means the season starts in mid-January. What's great about that is that the student athletes rarely miss class time in tennis. It is almost exclusively a weekend sport. They're already about three weeks into their season well, at this point. I, I, I'm proud to say that uh, I had a chance to start the women's tennis program when I was the athletic director. And I always felt like our tennis programs, and I think it's true today, they're, they're some of the best uh, teams in terms of their GPAs. They are serious about what they do academically. Uh, UPUI now calls West Indy Racket Club as their home. Go on, check them out on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Here at the Coliseum, Jags lead by four. Brennan, good move. Kind of timed those bumps to get some rhythm, and he's got eight. Well, you know, Omaha's not sending the second body, so you know, if you've got it, you got to make sure you get good movement of the other four, which they did. Osborne and Archie await the check back in for IUPUI. Good hands by Henderson, racing back hill. Finish, and T.J. Henderson with nine. And the story for IUPUI, Brennan and Henderson combined for eight points a game. They've got 17 in the first half. Well, and that was just great. And we've talked, I've talked about it a lot. Is that, rot oh, Randy careful. Reed, the finish. That rotation out of the ball screen, there was no rotation on that. That's just when you penetrate and split the defenders and get in the lane that quickly, everything breaks down. First points off of turnovers, by the way, the basket by Henderson for IUPUI. And Omaha went to it, and is still in the zone. Little odd front look. Shot clock at nine. Good ball movement leads to a good look for Henderson, who is in double digits. He likes extended minutes. Seriously, we've talked about it. You know, if you, you know you're going to get extended minutes, you know you're going to get time, it frees your mind. Near steal for IUPUI. Uh, but near. They couldn't get it, and White ends up with the basket. That's just your everything but situation, Greg. Did everything except get the ball. Boy, Henderson already too shy of his career high, which was set before Thanksgiving against South Alabama when he had 14. Barksdale Ooh. doesn't get the roll. Just couldn't get it to go. And then a, hand, or a foul going to be called against Henderson on the hand check, and that's going to be two, which... Again, with such short rotations tonight, that's tough for well, IUPUI. See how quickly you split the lane. I mean, just think about it. When it, Hollins is in quickly, and then on the other end, listen, he's had a great half. P.J. Henderson's done everything. Gone to the rim, st steals, knocked down jump shots. Henderson to the bench with two fouls, and Reed... Good physical look for the senior. Gets the basket to go. He's given them great minutes off the bench, Greg. Great minutes. Now, when you bring program kids that are seniors off the bench, you kind of know what you're getting. Yeah. And Omaha's got that with Reed and Smallwood. Jump hook by Osborne. Does not get the roll. But good looks the last time down for IUPUI, but could not convert. You'd say the same thing for Patterson for Omaha. You just keep wondering when he's going to start to go off. He averages 18, and he's had, like that, he's had good looks. Well, offense from an unexpected source for IUPUI. Archie's kind of in that same boat, too. He's already at his average on a per-game basis as he's got five. Because he's just aggressive, taking the ball to the rim. He's very confident. Knocked down that three to start, got him really going. Archie was a young man that scored more points a year ago, but he's playing a different role on this team. Hollins with the finish. <laughs> and everything. Did it all. We've wow. talked about his assists per game, his steals per game. His offense is pretty good, too, at 12, 12 points yeah, a 12 game. 12 a game, and there's a reason why. I mean, just think about it. He just plays so effortlessly, Greg. O'Leary, the three. A bit of a rushed effort by Matt, mm. but a break for the Jaguars. Hollins had that heel on the baseline. An extra possession here for IUPUI. Say what they're both teams, Greg, are tired. <laughs> the pace has been uh, pretty torrid to this point. Omaha was in action at home this weekend. They last played on Saturday, beating North Dakota State. A uh, little bit of a defensive lapse by Omaha. Osborne all alone and gets the easy finish.
for his first field goal. You're being generous with the laps. I think it was your total breakdown and a total lack of communication, and Osborne's wide open. IUPUI has not played in six days. They last played on Thursday against Oral Roberts in a game that, frankly, was not close for the last 35 minutes. Well, now IUPUI's gone zone, going to their matchup at the half court. Hollins the leave. Archie got a hand in there just in time. And then Hollins gets whistled for the reach in, which will lead to one plus the bonus for IUPUI when we come back from the media timeout. A little home cooking might be just what the Jaguars ordered. A miscue on defense doesn't hurt either. Jags lead by seven on HTSN. Two weeks. They're now seven and five. Currently the four seed in the upcoming Summit League tournament. They know they'll be in the tournament. Trying to stay in that upper half of the bracket. A win tonight would go a long way in doing so. That O'Leary to the free throw line to shoot one plus the bonus. I know these two teams would be the three and four seeds respectively. Meyer able to take away the rebound from Osborne. O'Leary now one of three from the free throw line tonight. Jags are still zone. Probably stay in this. Maybe the rest of the half. Osborne again does a good job of just holding yep. his ground and trying to do too much. Patterson the miss. He's had looks, Greg, that just haven't gone. Barksdale goes right by Erickson, goes right over Meyer, and they'll go right to the free throw line trying to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, but that's set up, though. I mean, you watch the penetration by O'Leary in the pass, and we talked about the bigs and their ability to pass it. And we know Marcellus Barksdale going to the rim, Greg. That's when he's at his best because he uses that strength and quickness you know, and plays through the contact to get the end one opportunity. First points of the night for the fifth-year senior from Lexington, Kentucky. And gets the free throw to go as well. He's up to 72% from the line now. I lost track of how many games in a row he started. What is it, 300, 400? <laughs> Close, closer to 90, but yes. Okay, I 90, think, 300, I mean, whatever. I, I believe this is start number 91 in a row for Marcel. That's oh, amazing. There goes Patterson. Barksdale got a piece. Osborne cleans up the rest. Barksdale at 6'5", the leading shot blocker for IUPUI. Osborne for three. It's a good look. Just hadn't got it to go. He's 0 for 2 from three-point range tonight. Came in over 50% from three on the season. Smallwood looking to answer. Not that time. And I think that's a foul on Jake White going the other direction. Yeah, it is. Tell you what, the zone has really been effective for IUPUI. One of the big things, again, you know, you, you kind of pick up a little, you, you save a little energy, if you will. But what they've done is they've just been extremely extremely confident in terms of their communication they, they feel but you can just sense being where we are being able to hear them and see them you know they feel comfortable in that zone and taking great pride in communicating with one another you know it's a matchup where you have to call each other off on cuts and cutters and walk people to a spot and all of those things they've done it very very well archie gets the roll you know there is a tradition or history of iupui teams playing a matchup zone pretty well yeah. It has been done here before. It's been done uh, for a number of years. Uh, and, again, you know, you, you start your you start the game. Your base defense is man-to-man. -man. You play 14, 15 minutes of man-to-man -man and then go against a team that really loves to go against you man-to-man-wise. Now here you change and you go back man-to-man. 9-2 -man. run for IUPUI. Erickson for three. <laughs> he did a great job of blocking off, forgot to go get the ball. Well, Archie <laughs> and, and White both just got tied up with each other and couldn't go get it. Stepping on the baseline is Patterson, six turnover for Omaha. Well, the defensive effort on Patterson has been, has been big because they've not allowed him to really turn it up and get to the rim like he can do. And Granted, he's missed some open opportunities, but right there, they did a nice job defending him. Barksdale can play some point guard when needed for IUPUI. A chance to give Combs a breather off the ball. Combs just two points. See if he makes me a liar. Not yet. We talked about thinking Combs will have to have a huge night for IUPUI to be successful. It's been the opposite. It's been everybody else tonight. 
White, the finish. That's just a great feed inside, though. Give great credit inside. Tim Smallwood on a tremendous penetration. White is a good, tough, hard-nosed player. Just dives really, yeah. for the rim, knows to be looking for the basketball. He leads the Mavericks in scoring with eight. Barksdale right around Smallwood at the other end. Well, you empty out the post. I mean, Brendan comes up post to set that side ball screen, and now there's nobody down there to give help to Marcellus Barksdale. Patterson in the lane, finds Erickson on the wing. That does not go. And Osborne able to keep it away from White. Less than a minute to play in the half. Good hustle by Osborne, scramble for the ball. Touched last by Omaha, it will maintain IUPUI ball. Maybe it's me, but I, I think IUPUI's got more energy right now. I mean, White is gassed. <laughs> he, needs that, he needs that horn to sound. I'm not sure he's going to make it. And, and it has just been a great effort on the part of the Jags. Well, Darren Hansen's MO, obviously, is if you get two fouls, you're seated for the half because Trey Sean Thurman, has been collecting dust on the bench since about the 15-minute mark, and that has led to more minutes for White. And it's an Omaha team that really plays nine, so right. you can get by with that. Shot clock in single digits yet again. Little runner for Barksdale. Doesn't get the roll. Archie, though, able to track it down, and IUP UI can hold for a final shot, and that's exactly what they'll do. Well, given the struggles of especially the last, say, five halves of basketball, right. this is a very impressive half for IUPUI. Well, it really is. What's impressive is, you know, you, the toughness that you've shown, the pride you've shown to, to have not played well in the last three times out. Here goes Combs. Extra pass, Barks, Barksdale for three. He Just the, the way you draw it up. To spin around the <laughs> rim to take all the time off the clock. <laughs> Count it for Marcellus and a 15 point lead at the half for IUPUI. They have just played seven in the first half. Those seven have been spectacular. You know he's going to defend and he's going to give you quality minutes, but you don't anticipate getting 12 points in a very impressive stint. The same starting five that began the game for IUPUI. You'll see a lot of Osborne. A lot of Henderson, and hopefully more of that. Matt O'Leary's first field goal to give IUPUI a 17-point cushion. Well, you know Thurman's got two fouls. You went right at him on the first possession. Did not see that much of Hollins because of a couple of fouls. Did not see that much of Thurman because of a couple of fouls. See, clearly Omaha has to get Patterson going, Greg. I mean, here's a, your leading scorer at 18, and... He effectively hasn't done anything for you uh, scoring. And it's something we didn't see in the first half very much. And let me tell you what, <laughs> just Erickson doesn't waste any time. Just the second made three for Omaha in this game. They average six threes a game. They're a 33% shooting operation, which is exactly what they are right now. They're two for six. And you can see a little renewed uh, Exuberance, if you will, defensively on the part of Omaha. A little, little more aggressive, a little more pace to them. Deep three, Combs, no. Brennan couldn't track it down. But it's that long rebound that allows you to get out in transition. Combs now one of five from the floor. Thurman averaging 14 points a game. Did have four in the half. Patterson has four for the game. Kind of what I was talking about. You know, he's got to, on his own, got to take a little more responsibility and be a little more assertive and aggressive. Patterson now two for six for the night. You don't want to let these guys get going, Greg. That's one of the big keys. The Omaha team is a prolific offensive team, and when they get in rhythm and get confident, they're very, very difficult to play. Archie with time and buries the three. Great possession. O'Leary, we know, gets baseline, can kick out, and Mason Archie can knock that shot down. Tough shot by White. Tough shot. He earned every bit, he earned every bit of it. He's impressive. He's an impressive kid. Mason Archie in double digits with 10 after that three for IUPUI. Last time he was in double figures, against Omaha back on January the 3rd. That makes life a bit easier as well. Matt O'Leary's second field goal of the half. Talk about rotation and IUPUI on that hedge and on that ball screen, and there was no rotation 
on the part of Omaha. Thurman tries to answer and does. How about him? Big man just steps out. Listen, we haven't talked about him because of the fouls. He's nearly a 15-point scorer and a seven-per-game rebound. The guy is a player. He did not play after the first four minutes of the half. Combs draws three defenders, makes the odds awfully well, easy for Aaron Brennan. It's a little matchup zone, and they're not really handling the screen well. And IUPUI counters with a little bit of zone on their own. Erickson into the lane, cannot finish. O'Leary snares the rebound. Combs gives it away. Thurman fouled and won, and again, you cannot no. commit that foul when you're IUPUI because you're so handicapped in terms of numbers tonight. Well, that and it, it's just a, a, a giveaway. You know, there's no, it's just a little touch foul, but it's all set up on a quick turnover in transition, quick, allows a big run out, allows numbers. Okay, you already given up the layup. Don't give them an extra point. Thurman now with nine, sophomore from Omaha. Shoots a little knuckleball and knocks it down. Now they picked up the pressure. You just sense it. Where we are, you can sense that Omaha's got the energy to start the half. Omaha 13 points to start this half. O'Leary can't get it to go. But then Omaha, was it tipped? Yeah. Apparently it was. Yeah. They, would, they, they really get out. They've got five guys who can all run the floor, guys who can put pressure on you with the dribble. Meyer and Smallwood already in off the bench for the Mavericks. The hustle by O'Leary. Scramble for the ball. Eventually won by the Mavericks. And Meyer finishes mm. and is fouled. Second straight and one opportunity that you got the hoop, don't foul. And a free throw for Omaha to make this a single-digit deficit. Well, Daniel Meyer, just the recipient of being right place, right time. It's just a you know, Thurman on a pass out. No need to foul. Meyer cannot convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. Young man from Billings, Montana. He began his career at Wright State. Well, the lead is at 10. 15 at the half. Four minutes in. And Barksdale, ball was blocked out of bounds to IUPUI. But Omaha starting to whittle away at that IUPUI lead. Jack's ball when we come back. You're watching on HTSN and ESPN3. Well, you don't have the season they're having without being able to, to make plays. And, you know, they did not play well in the first half. Didn't shoot the ball well in large part because IUPUI defended them. But. You knew they'd come out and give you this type of effort and this type of result in the second half. Shot clock at five. Got to go. Parksdale does just that. And that's going to get over the back foul yeah, on Mason Archie. Archie. The last thing you need, too, is he comes down on Thurman's foot. You hope he's able to walk that off. But it initially you kind of cringe a little bit. I'm not so sure he's... Gonna be gonna be full. He'll try to tough it out, but he'll be tested by guarding the speedy Patterson. Long guy with a bad wheel. <laughs> Just four fouls in the first half for IUPUI. Three already here at half number two. Smallwoods runner. Said this more than once, but a giveaway by IUPUI. Said that more than once too. Hollins can't connect. O'Leary had it. Hollins ripped it away. Then O'Leary is called for a foul. See, I know you want to be judicious with your timeouts, but you know, one thing that Coach has at his, his disposal is like this. Bring Henderson in, go to your bench. Even though you don't have a big bench, go to it. Get a breather, get some people settled down. What you need is a good defensive stand. You need to string together two or three good defensive stops. Get yourself back in the right direction. You know, we, we didn't realize I mean, the, the impact Thurman makes. I mean, he's, they're a different basketball team with Thurman on the floor. And Thurman draws the foul on O'Leary. That's three in this half on O'Leary. See, and that's a tough matchup for Matt O'Leary because, you know, Thurman, 
you know, he, he, he faces you up here, puts it on the floor, and can take it to the rim. The, the shot fake. Yeah. Yeah. Got him on the drive, but you're going to let him shoot. Thurman on the season, a 67% free throw shooter. Omaha did not attempt a free throw in the first half, and now one of three here in half number two. Well, I'm sure it was a point of emphasis in the locker room. We've got to try to get the ball, but Thurman is a guy who can actually take you to the rim and finish. But missed opportunities for Omaha. Yeah, now they've moved up, gone man-to-man. -man. They win this little matchup, and they lost track of some people. This is a much better deal for them. And that's going to be a foul on Hollins, which will be his third foul. It's an issue now because, you know, he is tremendously important to what they do. IPY real stagnant on this possession, Greg. You put a little two-man game on the left side, and three guys really not doing much, almost a, uh, a, a one-man game. You know, they, they'd be better served just to get something where you got guys moving, you guys, you know, a little more action toward the rim. Henderson for three, not that time. Goes in the first half, doesn't go in the second half. He made his first two in the first half. Good job of playing the passing lanes by IUPUI. Osborne touches it last. See Patterson just going to try to force it as much as he can. And, you know, you see just good use of the bench by Coach Hansen. He's got a little more, got a lot more to deal with. Thurman and Meyer check out as Jackson and White check back in. And White, uh, give it to him, and he's fouled. Tell you what, that was a big-time move. I'm not so sure he didn't walk. It was the energy. Watch what, you know, Patterson has done a nice job. I think I think Archie has done a nice job defending. Watch. Uh, good move. Good move on his part. That is a tough one. So White with 12 to lead Omaha. And the lead has now been sliced in half in the matter of six minutes. Yeah, and they're going to move it up a little bit and continue to put the pressure on. No trap out of the man-to-man -man just yet. No, but you can just tell they picked up their intensity at the half court. You know, you move the press up a little bit, that helps you do that. Nice ball movement. And that's a foul. See, and a basket. Need, need that. Again, in the last two or three possessions, there's been no ball movement. They've relied just on the dribble. I mean, you'll see this. You kick it out, you throw corner. Marcel Sparks, if, if, if I'm writing a scouting report on him, is if he if he catches, his, if he gets a ball reversal catch, he's going to the rim. Misses the free throw, does Marcellus. Became the fourth Jaguar in double figures with 10. He averages eight and a half a game. Jackson tries to answer at the other end, cannot. And Archie the rebound. Aaron Brennan will check in next dead ball for IUPUI. Archie has his pocket picked by Patterson. And Patterson at the other end scores. You can't stop him in transition one-on-one, -on -one, but the issue is if you have numbers, push it. If you don't have numbers, back it out. And IUPUI will take a 30-second timeout, but are turning to a full timeout. The lead at halftime was 15. It's down to seven. Jaguars have the ball when we come back on HTSN. Game where what you're literally doing is trading hoops. Darrell Combs back in for IUPUI. Aaron Brennan the same. O'Leary and Barksdale to the bench. See, I talked about Patterson needing to be assertive. Darrell Combs is the same way. He's you know, got to take it upon himself as the leader, which I think he'll do. He's the kind of kid he is. He's got to step up and start to be a little more aggressive going to the rim. They defended him well on that, but you know, just be patient with it. Osborne knew it had to go up quick. Thurman got a piece. Osborne again knew it had to go up just as quickly. Good knowledge of the shot clock, and Osborne gets the put back. That's basket. a great play by Nick Osborne. How quickly he got up off the uh, off the floor after the block shot. 
Good job on the help side glass from Aaron Brunnen for IUPUI. That's impressive. You get one quick one and out. You worked hard to get one at the other end. Now string together some su in succession some possessions. And that's a foul against White. See, that's good coming out of the timeout. Coach Gardner gets the timeout, gets his guy settled a little bit. That's actually not on White. That's on Thurman. That's better news for IUPUI because Thurman has picked up his third foul. Well, here's what I'm talking about. How quickly Nick Osborne, that's where strength and quickness comes in. You know, he made a great move to the rim, you know, got it blocked, presence of mind to get back and get it and on that second one, finish it out. Patterson gets a breather as Hollins comes back in, so speed replaces speed for Omaha. They got a lot, they got a lot of that, man. And Osborne, a perfect four of four from the free throw line tonight. He's got eight. Incredibly balanced effort for IUPUI this evening. Erickson for three. And Brennan the rebound. So IUPUI has pushed this back to 11. Combs trying to make it 13. Osborne. Now Henderson with the finger roll. He's tied his career high with 14. Yeah, but you like the fact, Greg, that both shots were going to the rim. Going to the rim. That's a heck of a break right there. And Combs commits the foul, his second, which will send Jake White to the free throw line. But IUPUI has scored six in a row. The lead has been pushed back to 13. And how about the efforts of the freshman from Cecina here on HTSA? Just think about it. Good things happen if you're under control going to the rim on the dribble. I mean, that's just its kind of a truism, I suppose, in the game, and, and especially with this group. Now, you know, defensively, if you can get those kinds of plays too, that kind of energizes what you're doing on the defensive end. White, an 82% free throw shooter. Chaska, Minnesota, that state's such a fertile recruiting ground for the western front, if you will, of, of the Summit League. The Dakota schools in Omaha with only Minnesota being the only Division I program in that state. 15 for White. See, but what concerns you is, is, is Omaha's a little run and jump here? Is their ability to score in a hurry? IUPUI trying to answer that's an it. offensive yeah, foul. That's yep. a good call. Led with the shoulder, that's Osborne's second foul. See, you didn't get the steal, but what you did was you, you got the foul, and this comes because of the press. It's a great pass by Brennan. I think Nick would have been better served, put it down on the on the deck on his left hand and just going ahead and finished him off. Or crossover. But good defense on the part of Omaha. Patterson gets a breather right now for the Mavericks. Well, something we haven't seen, the, the three-man weave to start your offense. We haven't seen it yet tonight. Hollins, tough drive. I love Hollins. I love everything about his game. He's just, he's, he's a tough kid. And back-to-back -back buckets by the Mavericks bring him back within nine. Well, you just see the ebb and the flow. I mean, it's in that little double team off the ball. O'Leary will check in next stoppage and play for IUPUI. The floater by Barksdale, they'll get him for the offensive foul. Remember, I said good things happen when you're going under control to the rim. No, and, and this is exactly, you know, Marcellus goes, leaves his feet, give White credit, stands there, sells it a tiny bit. Marcellus asking for the uh, for the arc. No, and it's, it's under control. If you do some things and recognize it, as you're going to the rim, make better decisions. Patterson back now for Omaha. Hollins to the bench. Omaha trying to answer the six-point spurt by IUPUI with one of their own. Patterson trying to do it one better with seven. Not that time. White, the rare offensive rebound tonight and scores. He's got 17. Jake White shows you why he's averaging 18 and 17 a game. Those are the first second chance points for Omaha tonight. Isn't that amazing? You know, 11 to, to 2 advantage for the Jags, but you get that first one with 10 minutes, 11 minutes left in the ball game. Right idea on the pass to Henderson. Good recovery by Erickson out of bounds to IUPUI. Yeah, you know, it's just good rotation, but you just keep that up. Keep rotating the ball going to the rim, trying to make some things happen. 
Holmes has not been there for him tonight. But White stepped on the sideline, getting the rebound, and IUPUI gets another extended possession. Yeah, I've just got a break on that one. But uh, you know, Darrell Combs just has not got gotten off the uh, off the mark yet. And uh, in large part, I think you got to credit Omaha. The quickness, I think, has bothered him. Combs, one of seven tonight from the floor. Eric's in the dive, but Man, can't corral it. Great hustle. Great hustle. You know, Brendan has him held off in the post just ever so slightly, but can't get it because of the quick rotation on the part of Omaha. Tough pass. O'Leary makes the save. And now Combs to the basket. Give it to him. And let's see if that can get IUPUI's leading scorer sparked. This is the Darrell Combs we know. I mean, you know, you watch on the catch. He is a determined man. Watch, splits. There's nothing to this. You know, plays through the contact for the and one. And you hope, Greg, like you said, you hope that's one that gets him going. Don't rely on the jump shot. It's kind of like a hitter in baseball. When you're in that slump, what do they tell you to do? Bump, kind of get yourself going. Get a layup, get yourself going. Combs now with five. Seven players have played tonight for IUPUI. All have at least five points. Well, again, you're getting the extended minutes, and you know you're going to get extended minutes. This half, kind of the ebb and flow has been between 7 and 13 in terms of the lead for yep. IUPUI. Jags are still zoned. A little two, two guard front. They'll match up out of it. And White, another and one opportunity. He's a man right now because, you know, he's able to get the catch. Darrell Combs went for the steal, didn't get it. And White goes through two people. And you see you out of your screen, here comes Combs, can't get it. Brendan on his hip. Henderson not there quickly enough. Foul goes against Brennan, his second. Now double bonus the rest of the way for Omaha. Yeah, Jake White has decided he's just going to go ahead and play, you know. He's a prolific scorer, Greg. You know, he's fourth in the league. We don't recognize he's fourth in the league in scoring, fifth in the league in rebounding. A rare miss from the line for White, an 82% shooter. Combs, no. Brennan, no. One more time for A.B. A lot of contact there with no call. And eventually the ball ends up in the hands of Omaha. Hollins, no. And out of the scramble, Patterson's got it for three. Yikes. And that's going to be a foul on White. <laughs> Slow down, everybody. It's just great hustle. You know, IUPUI banging away, trying to get what they can. Brennan just working as hard as a guy can work, just did not go. Give him credit. He sprints to the other end and does some decent work down there. Both teams feel like they missed some opportunities well, and probably some whistles. Tell you what, that's the type of possession where you spend a lot of energy now. You expend an awful lot of energy on a possession like that. You got time. White picks up his third foul. White, Thurman, and Hollins each with three for Omaha. O'Leary, the only player with three for IUPUI. Mm. Allow me to revise my previous statement because Hollins just picked up his fourth with 8.34 to play. Silly, silly foul. I mean, it's a silly foul. It's not even a foul. Ugh. Coach has got to be going, man, don't pick up your fourth one that way. You get your fourth one, earn your fourth one. So Smallwood will check back in. That's a big, big foul. Next foul puts IUPUI in the bonus turnover by Henderson. Oh, <laughs> listen, Tim Smallwood, just a great play. Good decision by Henderson, really good decision. You turned it over the last time, you know, the tendency is to go ahead and try to make it up on that play. Six is the lead for IUPUI, as close as this has been in a while. Smallwood with the bump. They will wave off the basket saying it's before the shot, but a free throw and maybe another coming up for Barksdale. Well, Omaha now on the ball screen, quick double. 
and when I say quick, it's quick. They get great rotation, as you saw before he picked up his foul, his fourth foul with Hollins. You've got to be aware of it. You know, and the last thing you want to do, like Darrell Combs did, is pick your dribble up. Had the presence of mind to split it, but you know, keep your dribble alive and rotate the ball as quickly as you can. It's an Omaha team that won their first four road efforts in league play. That's impressive. But they've lost their last two. That, that is, let me tell you what, first four in a row, that's an impressive display by anybody. Barksdale missed his last free throw. Connects on this one. He's got 11. Fourteen for Henderson, eleven for Barksdale, ten each for Archie and Brennan for IUPUI. Make it twelve for the fifth-year senior. Eight-point game at the eight-minute mark in favor of IUPUI. Deep three, Smallwood. I'm not sure with as quickly as Omaha plays if there's a bad shot in this offense. That might have been one of them. IUPUI the basketball and an eight-point lead when we return. As you're watching IUPUI Hoops on HTSN. Two games remain in their regular season after tonight. They actually drew the bye for the last day of the season. So after Saturday's game in Fort Wayne, they will host Oral Roberts on Thursday and then kind of wait to see what else happens right, in the right. league. Yeah, some will tell you one way or the other. One is, you know, good to get the break going in. Some will say, you know, and this is a rhythm kind of team. You'd like to continue the momentum and the rhythm you have. It's the classic six to one half dozen to the other. Little press, little one, two, one, one. The leave for Osborne, no. But last touch by Omaha. I think Nick Osborne got you know, midair. wasn't sure whether to put it on the on the rim or put it on the board. IUPUI now winning the rebounding battle. That goes as a team rebound. 36 to 21. Combs all the way down. Gets a little separation from Thurman and <laughs> count the basket for Combs. Well, fought him off and <laughs> there was contact, but got the hoop. By the way, Holland's back in the game with four fouls for Omaha. And Holland's no, but the rebound tipped He's right to bounds. him. However, yeah. that sideline has been mean yeah, to Omaha is. tonight. They yeah. lost three or four easy rebounds just because a player had his foot on the baseline. Well, he exploded and just couldn't get it to go. And I think, he, you know, Coach is making a move already with seven minutes offense, defense with Smallwood, which is good. I mean, you, know, you don't want, you know, Hollins to pick up his fifth foul. And leads the nation in steals with four per game. He's at three tonight. Leads the league in assists, which is under six a game. How about that as a combination? Combs, oh, scoop, yeah. Oh, yeah. give it to him. <laughs> I told you, he's got to get more assertive. He must have been listening. Get more, get aggressive. Go to the rim. Speaking of being aggressive. Now get him with some help. O'Leary. Look at this. Nicely done, Matt O'Leary. <laughs> got energized coming out of the timeout. Picked up a couple of things defensively. Lead is back to 14. It was 15 at halftime and briefly 17 early in the half. Now Smallwood will drive and still couldn't finish. Right idea after missing that three, just couldn't get it to go. Yeah, no need greedy now. Just you know, take some time, get a good possession. With how quickly this Omaha team can score, this game is far from over. Like the curl. Love the curl with him. See? And Archie the finish. It's a great move because you get the curl, you get the, Darrell the ball in the lane, and he's hard to defend. 10-0 run for IUPUI. Omaha had got it back to six. The Jags have extended to 16. Thurman. Man, tough shot. <laughs> No one I know stopping that. That's a great move. Thurman now with a dozen. A 30-second timeout taken by Omaha. 
Darrell Combs, Greg, just, you know what, when he gets on that base, better job of one and out type positions. But I think it's been, uh, they've, they've handled the ball screens much, much better. See if Omaha cranks up the pressure a bit here. Well, I think they need to. I mean, I really think that, you know, you're full denial here if you can. You've got to get that second body up, and there he comes with Thurman to try to get the trap. The job to avoid it by IUPUI. So you brought Hollins back to roll the dice. So you got to have the nation's leader in steals. You've got to have him in there. O'Leary had Osborne for a second, but didn't want a chance. He didn't want to turn the ball over. Yeah, but you, again, you, you got down inside 10 on your shot clock. And there's the nation's leader. And an easy bucket for Omaha. Now at his average of four per game. And again, there's so much time. You cannot relax. So Combs heeds your advice, goes right to the basket. Osborne oh. couldn't finish the first time. <laughs> a bit of divine intervention on the second one. But White misses at the other end. Thought contact was coming. Osborne took a pretty good shot in the eye. Yeah, he did. I have no idea if he knows he tipped that ball in basically at the other end. I think uh, I don't know that he does. It was He, uh, he and Matt O'Leary both coming up just you know, kind of O'Leary, I think, got a, a shot in the uh, ribs, and, and Nick may have gotten one in the eye on that same pos on that possession. And knowing that I ball, no long passes, no no short, uh, no sloppy passes. Everything's got to be crisp. Step to the pass. You're going to get double teamed. You're going to get bumped. You got to take care of it. Well, IUPUI to set out sub out O'Leary because he's got blood coming from his nose. They had to sub out Osborne to get a contact fixed. They have done that, and that's a foul on Thurman. And that is going to be Thurman's fourth foul. And that will be one plus the bonus for IUPUI. Well, he did not agree with it, but I think everyone in the building thought it was a foul. You got Warriors over there, Greg. That's what you're going to say after the game. You get, I mean, Osborne and O'Leary. I mean, Thurman's right there. You know, he gets it, but gets him in the upper body. and Got a knockdown. Free throws. Patterson quickly flying. Wow. Hollins wow. finishes. Hollins with 10. Did we mention can score in a hurry? You know, they're all out pressed now, and they're going to come up. They're going to run and jump you and then lock in and play you man-to-man -man at the half court. A 30-second possession is a good one for IUPUI. Shot wow. clock at one, got to go up, Count it. and it's got to go in. <laughs> that kind of night wow. for Mason Archie. Yes, it has been. He's got 15. The lead is 15. That's no longer the case when I finish saying it. And Darren Hansen will take a 30-second timeout. And that one should translate, I believe, into the full timeout with 3.26 left to play. 12-13 season. Jaguars have beaten Omaha one time. That was in Omaha last year. In previous trips to Indianapolis, Omaha has come away with a victory every time, including double OT regular season finale a year ago in what would be the season finale for the Mavs because they were ineligible for the Summit League Tournament. A little more at stake in terms of the postseason for the Mavericks this year. And IUPUI maintaining a 13-point lead. O'Leary and Osborne still on the bench. Doesn't hurt him at this stage, but he got it on the offensive foul. Combs' third foul. I was going to say, you have ball handlers out there to handle the pressure, but clearly those two bigs will be back in some offensive defensive situations, and you see Coach Hansen going offense defense too. So Thurman and Hollins, each with four fouls, will check back in. As you see on your screen, there's only one timeout remaining for each side. So you got to be careful how much you use the offense-defense thread here. But that one worked out perfectly for the Mavericks. Patterson the drive and dish, but Thurman wasn't ready for it. Mm. And IUPUI gets a bit of a gift on just the ninth Omaha turnover. And again, they will sub out, sub in, and sub out, trying to stash players with four fouls. 
Yes. Well, again, you're going to go a little uh, all, you know, denial, and then go one, two, one, one. <laughs> Patterson almost gets it. Eleven steals tonight for Omaha. They average nine and a half a game. Hollins leads them with four. Well, you got your your ball handlers in. You got your four guys who can handle it. Plus, Brendan can he can catch and and, and get you some uh, some space. And Smallwood gets whistled for the foul, and Barksdale will shoot two. But again, when he's isolated on that wing, when he catches it on the wing and there's no post player, you know what he's going to do. And uh, Smallwood saying he, he had all ball. Marcellus a chance to make two big free throws. It tends to get quiet in this See, building. I'm afraid, you know, normally so, I, don't, I don't have a problem talking. But, right. You know, I'm, I'm afraid to say anything. This kind of reminds <laughs> me of when it gets so quiet here, those consolation games, third oh, place in a tournament, yeah, there's eight yeah. people in the joint. I used to ask the players, could you hear me? They go, oh, yeah, we heard oh, every yeah, word. Absolutely. So a moment to pause and reflect if <laughs> Barksdale misses the second. And Barksdale returns the favor on Patterson, who then gives the foul. And that'll be his first, but free throws at the other end, and now the double bonus variety for IUPUI. Well, Marcellus has just had another one of those quietly successful games. You know, this, the steal, you know, the drive, the finish. You, know, you talked about it at, at the halftime, that, that spurt at the end of the first half where he was really, really big. And, you know, just think about key baskets, key steals, and rebounds, which he's done his entire career. And we're bragging on him, and he's missing a free throw. But he'll knock this one down, I have faith. He's now three of six from the line today is Marcellus. Not always a great free throw shooter, but has been good as of late. See, you have to have faith. Got that one to go. Have faith. Omaha has never led in this game. Barksdale got a piece. Barksdale got the rebound. <laughs> and a jump ball is called. White had a lot more arm than he had ball, but the arrow points to Omaha. Well, just a great block. I mean, Patterson turns it, goes to, to the rim, and Marcellus is able to get a piece of the ball. Patterson for three. White fouled, mm. and he'll shoot two. So here's one of the keys, though, in the last two minutes. you got to make sure you don't foul shooters. You don't want to give them opportunities with the clock stopped. White missed his last free throw but made his first three. His 19 points lead all scores tonight. We've referenced the fact that he and Patterson are three and four in the league in scoring. The two guys in front of them, Obi Amegano from Oral Roberts, and Max Landis from Perry Meridian High School and IPFW, whom we will see here next Saturday. What a great year Max is having at Fort Wayne. No question. For those that don't know, Bob coached his dad, Mike, sure at did. IUPUI. Sure did. You know, they were in that, uh, that was our first recruiting class here, Greg, and, and uh, Mike and, and his teammates, in many respects, it was a group when they were sophomores, went to the NAI National Tournament. I think historically that may be the team that got things going in the right direction. Henderson lost it. Patterson yeah, connects. I mean, and he got bumped. Henderson got bumped, and, and Coach Hanson, understandably, is a little upset. Barksdale into the front court, and he is fouled. And Jason Gardner can be heard in this building and several others on the fairgrounds campus right now trying to get the attention of T.J. Henderson. Well, I, you know, again, the, the easy, the giveaway, you know, just on the spin move, that uh, he didn't execute well, gave him a run-out basket. There's still time with a team as prolific as, as Omaha is. You can't relax. So Barksdale to shoot two. And misses on the first. Uh, UPUI leaving that door open just a little bit. Number 
Barksdale now four of eight from the free throw line. Well, you just know that Omaha is going to push it up and get to the rim as fast as they can. Barksdale connects on the second, which allows Nick Osborne to return. They'll get Matt O'Leary back in the game as well. As they'll go a little bit bigger to match up with more of the size on the floor for Omaha. Well, it's a good move because you can match up big for big with Omaha's bigs. Smallwood, a deep three that draws nothing. Thurman, though, able to track it down. But Barksdale playing the passing lane, able to scramble for the loose ball, but Hollins out of there with it. And Hollins, a blocking foul from Osborne, and Osborne couldn't decide whether he wanted to go for the block or try to take the charge, didn't either, and picks up the foul. Well, your key now is just... Get it over, get it over midcourt. Take a little time. Know you're going to get fouled. So Hollins to the free throw line for the first time tonight. A 76% free throw shooter. I joked with Marcellus before the game. I said, "Hey, you need a breather. Loosen the shoelaces a little bit. <laughs> he call. might need a breather good. with a minute 39 left to play. Good call, Coach. <laughs> well, you know, again, extended minutes. But you're in your, your early 20s. Come on, now. You get a break every four minutes. Now, this is the, the old timer. <laughs> Come on, you can play for stretches of four minutes. You're young. You're in shape. Tradion Hollins <laughs> makes them both. It's back to an 11-point game. We've seen crazy things happen. 11 is not safe with a team like an Omaha. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Erickson. And two free throws coming for Darrell Combs, who was one of one from the line this evening at 74% on the season. And Erickson may not like the quickness of that call, but frankly, when you're down by 11, right. a quick whistle to get you the basketball back is generally a good thing. Well, you know what? You're, I think you're right. I mean, you know, it, it just does the same thing as, you know, of, uh, of, a, of a foul you're trying to foul anyway. You know, Erickson, though, Greg, how about the All-State NABC Good Works team? You know, distinguished group of student athletes, uh, their commitment to enriching the lives of the people in their community. I mean, it's a really neat story for him. You know, he suffered uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, witnessed a shooting and when he was in high school, you know, got counseling, has done videos, has given speeches and done things. And, and he needs to be applauded, obviously, for, for the great effort that he's done and he has been by being part of the All-State Good, uh, you know, good, uh, good Works team. Hollins able to scramble and find the ball. Patterson's runner does not go. I mm. think they're going to get a foul on Osborne as he and White were tied up going for a loose ball down low. And free throws coming for White. The foul on Osborne will be his fourth. That's a tough one. You always know that you, know, you want the clock to run. Um, not much you can do about that one. White has missed two of his last three from the line. He's four of six for the game. Why don't you just put the, the hex on him there? <laughs> for, for <laughs> you see Erickson back in the game. Began his career at Northwest Missouri State, the Division II football powerhouse. <laughs> 21 now for White to lead all scores. Henderson playing keep away as best he can. Barksdale doesn't mind taking a little extra time here. Combs eventually gets the foul, and Darrell Combs the free throw line, and that's a good possession for IUPUI just because they took 15 seconds off the clock. Well, it was great ball movement. You know, you have a tendency, Greg, with players is that they wait to get fouled, and what you try to teach them to do is don't get fouled. I mean, it's some somehow counterintuitive to kids, but – if you pass it and don't get fouled, great things will happen. If you get fouled, yeah, the clock stops, number one. And number two, you have a chance to miss. I understand your confidence, and I love it. But, you know, if we move the ball, 
run clock, don't get fouled, and it's kind of hard sometimes to get it through. Combs now with a dozen. And make it 13. He's a perfect 5 of 5 from the stripe tonight. O'Leary makes Hollins pick it up just so the clock continues to run. Hollins kind of got his steps off, and then White couldn't track down the rebound. And Omaha will take their final timeout, which will be a full timeout with a minute six left to go, and IUPUI leading by 14. So let's let's talk about kind of what this does to the standings. After IUPUI oh, yeah. beat yeah. them at the buzzer on January the 23rd, and if things go well for Fort Wayne tomorrow night, and then there's a potential for Fort Wayne trying to clinch the regular season title here in this building on February the 27th. If things break properly for IUPUI, who knows if they went out, they could be playing for a share of that league title next Saturday afternoon. Well, this, as you mentioned, there's so much going on because you know you get two teams with three losses. Now you're going to have two teams with five. So much can happen. Three games, two games left, uh, three games for most people, too, as we know for Omaha. And the great thing about it is the Jags are playing two of their final three right here in a place where they've had great success. Combs ahead to Barksdale. Omaha has several of their players that have yet to see the floor tonight in. See if they're going to be in for foul purposes or they're just going to get these kids some run, and it looks like it's the latter. And Henderson now with two free throws. And if he can make just one, he's got a new career high. There, there we go. go. This is just his fourth double-digit scoring game of the season. The previous three, South Alabama, Kennesaw State, and Butler. You could just tell he came out determined. First couple possessions, you know, he was prepared mentally and really has performed very well. Jackson with the runner that goes. His first points. Omaha going to play full court, but again, for the most part, I think they are done fouling yeah, at this point. I, I think they are. I think I, I think that you know, this is a, a very impressive win in many reasons, for many reasons for the Jags. Zach Parag, Devin Newsom, Alex Alberry, the players in the game for Omaha. And O'Leary going to get fouled. And if O'Leary can make both free throws, that IUPUI would have put every player on the floor tonight in double digits, all seven of them. That's pretty impressive. That's impressive. I'll tell you what's impressive about the win is, look, you know, you lose three in a row on the road, and it travels miserable, and you're tired and physically, mentally drained. And, and, and to come back and battle like they did tonight shows a lot about this basketball team. There's no question that this is an impressive win. And there's a lot about the coach and his staff understanding their group and everybody buying in and understanding yeah, it's tough to win on the road. And, yeah, they shouldn't. You know, they, the Denver loss sent them back, and they had nothing against Oral Roberts. But now this shows you what kind of group they are. Jags will empty the bench. John Hubler, Grant Sin, both going to get some playing time for IUPUI. Patterson with the miss, and IUPUI will have the basketball, and the clock should – Nearly sync up shot clock and game clock. And IUPUI didn't lead the entire game, but they're going to come awfully darn close. They're going to lead this game for about 38 minutes of it. We talked at the beginning of the game, you know, uh, about being on the road and what you do. And, and I said, look, the great equalizer is being back home and, and feeling good about yourself. And that's what they've done. They've taken advantage of it. But let's not forget how well they play in the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. They play very, very. You're going to have to be, an, you're going to have to play awfully well to beat them in this building. Just one loss this year. That coming back to Oral Roberts in mid-January. Three for Jackson is good. So Jackson will finish with five, and IUPUI should be able to bring this ball to the front court and pretty much take the air out of it. 88-76 going to be the final score. First ever win for IUPUI against Omaha in Indianapolis. Jaguars won at Omaha a season ago. Solid night for IUPUI. It was double digits for a large chunk of the second half. Omaha never went away, but IUPUI truly never let him back in the game. The closest they got in the second half, six points at 63-57. IUPUI, they went on a 10-point run 
to put this game away. T.J. Henderson will be our post-game guest, and we'll talk to him after our final timeout. Final score this evening, IUPUI 88, Omaha 76. We're back to wrap it up next here on HTSN and ESPN3.